Say hi. What's your name? More than a small chicken. Can you do a kitty cat? <coughs> Chirp. <coughs> Can you bark? <coughs> tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. Good. Ah, chew. Love you. Thank you. You so pretty. <coughs> Good. Are you a birdie? Are you a birdie? Will you? Good. Say hi. <coughs> Good. What do you like to do? <coughs> what did I say? Don't do that. Bye. 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 Good girl. Here you go. All that for an omen. Hi guys, I get a lot of messages and comments from time to time about what's um, the best way to teach my bird how to talk. And also, um, if my bird is like a certain amount of years old and he still hasn't learned to talk, is there anything that I can do to try to get my bird to talk? So I decided that um, I'm going to create this video to kind of answer all of those questions for you. First of all, if talking ability is really important for you, if you want to, if you want a parrot that um, absolutely knows how to talk, and that's super important to you, my recommendation: there's a species of parrot that is guaranteed to talk. The bird is right here, and check this out. It's like magic. It's right here. <laughs> all right. Um, this guy's is Pete the parrot, the repeating parrot. And um, the cool thing about Pete is Pete, you don't really even need to feed Pete. Feed, uh, Pete feeds only on, I think it's uh, AA batteries. So if talking ability is that important for you, I'd recommend get Pete. But um, I will say this, all kidding aside, guys, um, if you are really getting a parrot just for the purpose of getting a bird that talks, you really shouldn't be getting one. And um, I know it's ironic that I have an African Grey and I'm saying, you know, these kinds of things. But the honest truth is I didn't get Smokey for her talking ability. And I don't think that it is fair for anybody to get a bird just um, for the sake of getting a bird that talks. But I will tell you guys this, um, although Smokey talks a lot and she knows how to say a lot of things on cue, that's not the reason that makes Smokey so special to me. And for me personally, the ability for a human and an animal to connect and make um, and form, you know, such a strong bond. That's really what I think is remarkable. And um, I think you guys get the idea that talk, if you're going to get a bird that's just for the sake of talking, don't get one. But with all of that aside, here's what I will tell you regarding talking ability. What is it, Smokes? Not all parrots have the same ability to mimic. In the parrot family, African greys are probably the number one birds that are most likely um, going to learn how to talk. Aside from African greys though, um, the Amazon parrots, namely the double yellowhead Amazon, the yellow naped, and the blue fronted Amazons, and also the yellow crown, those are the ones that are most um, likely to talk um, as well. So if you guys are getting, for example, a cockatiel, they're not going to be as um, likely able to talk as, say, an African Grey. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be as good of pets as African Greys are. And this is the next thing that I um, want to talk about in my video. And that is, and I promise guys I'm going to get to the whole um, topic about how you can increase the chances of your bird learning how to talk. But before I even get there, I think it's really important for me to mention this now. Because I've always um, wanted to do a full-length video on it. And there's so much that I want to say about it, but I'll try to keep it all short. Another question that I've heard so much about is at almost every single one of my videos, I always get someone who comments, um, what's the best starter bird? Or I'm new to keeping birds, what's um, kind of like the first bird that I should get? And here's what I will tell you. There is no such uh, thing as a starter bird. Um, I know that a lot of bird books will recommend that People get budgies or cockatiels. Come on, step up. Good. Because um, they feel like those kinds of birds are better off as starter birds. But I think it is really misleading to get a bird thinking that it's going to be a starter bird because that gets people to think that these birds are more disposable, which they're not. And if you're going to get a bird, for example, as a cockatiel or a budgie, a parakeet, as kind of like your starter bird. The problem with that is that if you do end up getting a larger bird and you're not, and noise isn't like something that you are prepared for, a cockatiel uh, by itself, they're 
relatively, and I say relative because um, it's relative to all the other parrots. Cocktails are fairly, I would say, quiet birds, but they do screech. And even though one cocktail or even two <laughs> might not screech that much, if an African Grey or an Amazon or even a Macaw uh, manages, and they will, copy that screech, they will amplify that sound 10 times, maybe even 20 times louder. So now you have um, a problem. And if everybody were to have that mindset of getting a starter bird, don't worry guys, you're just going to poop, but I have a box below, so it's going to catch your poop. But if everybody gets into the mindset that they should always start off with a budgie or a cockatiel, then that means that every single person who has a parrot um, would have one. Which I think is not really um, also a very a fair thing to do for the bird. And this is my personal opinion, that if you're going to get a parrot, any species at all, you got to first do your own research. And by research, I don't mean watching my videos. Um, that could be a start, but you guys need to do um, a lot of other research on parrot behavior and talk to people who have parrots. Uh, maybe even volunteer at a bird rescue center. Because just interacting with a bird for maybe one time at a bird store does not give you the whole picture of what it's like to live with these animals. Um, I'll give you an idea. Cockatoos, macaws, and the Eratinga conures, which are sun conures, gende conures, and blue crown conures, they are extremely loud. And some people don't realize how loud they really are. And you guys might think that you're able to keep up with the noise, but the honest truth is most people can't. And most people don't realize that, unfortunately, until after they get the bird. And just a little message on the side here, especially to my younger viewers. When I was um, younger, and I think this was back when I was early in high school, I always wanted a sun conure. Whenever I went to the bird store, they were bright, colorful birds. They were super affectionate and playful, and I always wanted one. So I told myself I can't wait until I save up enough money so I can get myself a sun conure. Now that I'm older and I can um, just go out and get a sun conure, I don't. And I don't, and I'm really glad that I wasn't able to when I was younger, because I know for a fact that it would drive me crazy, the noise would drive me crazy. Because although the sun conures, um, are really small, their screech is really high-pitched and extremely loud. Now, if you guys think, well, I am really dedicated, and again, this is a lot of this is for, this message itself is for my younger viewers. You guys might think that you're ready for a bird, but if you're still in school, your interests are going to change. As you go on to college, as you guys um, get older, your interests are going to change. Um, and your priorities might also change. And at that time, it wouldn't be fair to say, oops, you know, like, sorry, Polly, I gotta leave. And you have no idea what to do with your bird at that point. So I would always hold off, guys. Um, it's never a bad idea. If you're thinking about getting a bird, but you're still in school, just hold off until um, you're kind of more stable and you can financially support yourself. And that way, you can at least also support your bird. Um, where was I? Okay, I know that this is a video about a bird's talking ability and I'm getting really off tangent, but I think it is necessary. I definitely don't recommend people um, getting macaws, cockatoos, African greys, or any of the large parrots uh, with the, with this misconception that, you know, getting a larger parrot, it makes a better pet. Honest truth is, it, not quite. And... A lot of the smaller parrots, if you really have to get a parrot, a lot of the smaller ones um, can make just as good of pets as the large ones. Parrotlets, for example, um, cockatiels, not only do they, not only can they get really affectionate and they love interaction as much as a large parrot, but the cool thing about those is that because they are so small, you guys um, don't, you can easily get a cage where they can um, easily fly in. Smokey's aviary is huge. Um, if you guys watch some of my other videos, it's not everybody can accommodate an, av an aviary that's that big. But if you guys have a smaller bird like a parrotlet or a cockatiel, um, you can provide them with proportionally a really good sized enclosure for them to be able to fly in. So that's just some things I want you to think about.
I would also recommend that instead of buying from a bird store, which um, I totally advise against, if you guys can, um, look into adopting from a, a bird shelter. Because there's a lot of birds that do need homes. A lot of macaws, especially in cockatoos, because a lot of people get them without really understanding what um, the responsibilities are to take care of such a large um, bird. Now, if you guys did stay with me through all of that talk, um, let's now jump into the topic of this video, which is talking. So the first thing is this. If you're expecting to get a bird that's going to talk, you're going to select a species that's gonna, um, that are known for talking. Of course, remember what I said, talking ability should not be the number one make or break it criteria. But if that is one of your criteria for a bird, then um, the best talking ones I would say are African Greys, the Amazons, um, Budgies, the Parakeets can also learn to talk really well. And a few other tips is this. If you guys already bought like a tape recorder that repeats words or phrases over and over, what you want to do is you want to take that and you want to throw it in the trash. Because that's useless. Your bird might be able to learn maybe one or two words um, off of that, but eventually your bird is going to kind of get really annoyed with that. I mean, if you, got, if you played it to yourself, you would get totally annoyed with that as well. So your bird is eventually going to zone out and kind of see that as background noise. The best way that I've found to teach a bird how to talk is to make it meaningful for your bird. So instead of standing here and saying, hello, 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 every time I open the door to come greet Smokey, I would, I would always say hello. And eventually she learns that, oh, I get it. When, the, when um, my human walks in, I'm always greeted with hello. So she learns that there is, that word is associated with an action. So when things are more meaningful, the bird learns it a lot more. And I'm, sure, I'm gonna show you guys something really cool. I'm gonna exit this door right now. And all of this, guys, is kind of like filmed candidly. So I'm not gonna edit any of this stuff out. So I'm going to open this door in a second and we'll leave the room. Watch what Smokey's going to say, watch what I tell her, and watch what she says in response. See you later. I don't know if you guys got that. But she said it. She said, I'll be back. And that's not something that I trained her how to do. It's just, whenever I leave the room, I used to tell her, I'll be back. So now she's learned that whenever I leave the room, she says that word. And the cool thing is, when you teach your birds how to talk meaningfully, they can um, communicate with you um, in ways that would not be possible if they were just to mimic what you say. So your bird could learn um, how to associate certain actions with um, words. Smokey, let me see if she'll do this one. Can I see your foot? Can I see your foot? Let me see your foot. Good. So um, for me, I would really recommend, if you guys are trying to tra train your bird how to talk, talk to them meaningfully like you would a child. And that way, not only, not only do they learn faster, but they also learn how to associate and um, talk more in context. Another tip I would give you is parrots are most uh, receptive to training. They're most receptive to training both on um, trick training and also by they're also most verbally engaged with you when the sun first comes up and also when the sun begins to set. So anytime before noon and also anytime right before sunset, that's when they learn um, the most. So I would try to talk to them most during those times. And I also have um, another tip for you. Smokey, even though she says a lot of things, there are very few things that she would say in my voice. And that's kind of surprising. She would say a lot of things in uh, my wife's voice. She would say things in my parents' voice. So I think that as what it boils down to is that she sees my wife, she sees my parents as her rival for my attention. So if you're having a hard time training your bird how to talk, try to get somebody else in your family to um, talk to your bird because if they see um, your family members as a rival for your attention, they'll be more likely to copy that to try to get your attention uh, because they know that when somebody else talks to you and they say a certain word, that kind of gets your attention. So they'll try to also um, mimic that. Right, Smokes? Guys, I know that's a lot of information. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. 
Okay, so before I forget, later on in this video, I do want to mention this as well. The point of my videos isn't to inspire people to go out and get a bird for themselves, but instead it's to inform people of what um, is kind of involved in keeping a bird like this, in keeping um, such an intelligent animal and also ensuring that they are thriving in our homes. And I also, a bigger point of my videos is so that people who do have parrots have a resource and have um, this information that they can refer to, to kind of modify their bird's behavior and also to develop a deeper re relationship with the bird that doesn't involve using punishment or using aversives with their bird. Smokes, come here. Step up, good. Give me a kiss. Good bird. Is there anything else? Okay, smokes. I never taught her this, guys, but check this out. Can you say something? Smokey, say something. Meow. All right. I literally, I seriously never taught her that, but whenever I told her, can you say something? She really just, um, she says candid stuff. Sometimes she'll meow. Other times she'll do sounds. But um, I never taught her that, which I thought is pretty cool. Let's see what she'll do next. Smokey. Okay. Can you say something? Say something. You're a stinker. Okay. You are. All right. I also know that there are some myths out there about how to get your bird to talk more. And one that I know is really common, or one that I, I guess I hear a lot, is that if you feed your bird um, pepper, that they will talk more. And somebody once told me the reasoning behind it. Um, I think that's complete nonsense. Um, from a scientific perspective, the reason why pepper is, is spicy is because of a chemical called capsaicin. And parrots do not have a receptor for capsaicin, so they cannot taste spice. Um, they do, however, really like peppers. So if you guys are feeding your bird pepper, um, your bird's gonna like it. They're actually pretty good for your bird. They're high in vitamin A. But they're not gonna help your bird to talk any better than your bird already is. So, what you doing? Smokey, here's something else that she does. Let me get closer to the camera so you guys can see. Tilt her this way. Hey, all right, Smokes, can you knock? Knock. All right, come on. Whoa, what are you doing? This is the level of trust, guys, that I've been able to establish with her. As, as I can hold her anyway, and she won't. She won't even put any kind of pressure on my finger. A good sign that your bird is listening and that they're practicing how to talk is actually pretty cute. Is that usually early in the morning and also later on at night, they'll start by themselves, or start by themselves, to so start babbling and just um, mumbling a bunch of gibberish. So if you guys are, noticing something like that in your birds, chances are they are listening to what you're um, saying and they're trying to perfect um, they're trying to perfect how to say whatever um, it is that you've been teaching them. So don't give up hope yet. Alright guys, so before this video ends, I do want you, my viewers, to tell me in the comment section below if there is one thing that you would want to tell a new bird owner or a prospective owner, somebody who um, is planning on getting a bird, what would you tell them? Let me know that um, in the comment section below. If you guys are thinking about getting a bird, make sure you guys check out the comment section below after this video so you can um, see what other bird owners are saying. So hopefully that was helpful. If you guys can do me a favor, click the like button below and also share this video so that we can hopefully get this message and this information across to everybody who is planning um, on getting a bird in the future. Alright, so Smokey and I, we hope that you guys have a great start to your new year, and we'll see you guys all next time.